I'm so excited we're finally here to talk about the Kingsman because I was thinking about this. I was like, oh, I interviewed Matthew Vaughn before. What was that for? It was 2019 for the Kingsman when we were at New York Comic Con. So oh. what does it feel like to just like finally get to this point? I'm finishing off a movie literally this today or tomorrow. And uh, so I've, uh, and this was three years ago we shot this. So I've got, my head is a little bit like scrambled eggs. I've got all these different spies whizzing around. Um, but I'm glad that hopefully people will see this on a big screen. Um, you know, there was obviously discussions over the last couple of years when it was finished, whether we, um, as you said, 2019, I mean, how bizarre is that? Whether we, uh, whether it did go streaming and that would have, you know, I'm, I appreciate Disney held on because I we did design this for a, the big screen. It's really awesome to see on the big screen. So just to back it up a little bit, like where did the or the idea of doing an origin story of the Kingsman, where, when did that strike for you and where, where, how did that begin? Well, the actual plot and the story was in Kingsman 1 when Harry is explaining to Eggsy who they are, why they were founded and when, blah, blah, blah. So that was already written in stone. And I actually watched a movie called The Man, rewatched the movie called The Man Who Would Be King. And I loved it. And I forgot how much I loved it. And I remember how much I loved it as a kid. And I sort of made a joke saying we should make the man who would be Kingsman. And then I went, hold on, there's something in there. And and I needed, and then I just got obsessed with going, well, hey, maybe I can get away with doing a big period epic war drama that, and just say the man would be Kingsman and everyone in Hollywood would go, oh, very exciting. <laughs> um, and then watch and go, what the fuck has he gone and done? So that was sort of how it started and once, once I saw the movie and we started writing it, and it, it, I was like, oh yeah, this, I, 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 I can never understand you know, creativity. It's hard to explain why did you do something apart from you wanted to. And I, right. I just wanted to do it. And I just felt it just, it was the itch that got needed to be scratched and we scratched away. I'm so glad you said that because I, I feel like I can tell I'm like, oh man, like I love this. Matthew Vaughn really wanted to do this like war movie. And I I just, I loved how it was done. And it is like, it's very, it's, it's totally different than the other Kingsman films, but there are these links and winks and nods and this kind of thread throughout. Can you talk about that process of just kind of separating them a little bit? Like the vibe is a little bit different? Well, it had to be different. You can't give birth to an 18 year old man. You have to, you know, so this was, this is the birth of Kingsman and they have to, and you have to, you know, a journey has to, you know, if you want to get to a destination, journey can't begin at the destination, right? You have to go somewhere totally different. Uh, so that, but you know, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of fans watching the beginning of this movie going, oh, we went into the wrong screen. What the hell is this thing we're watching? And by the way, we, you know, it was tempting to go, we could cut 20, 25 minutes of the beginning out and start with all the fun stuff. But, you know, I, I, I watched, I always watched Deer Hunter not the same as movies anyway, as good as Deer Hunter, but Deer Hunter really taught me as a kid the set up a world so when you go to a new world and it becomes a different world, you really feel these characters and you go on the journey. So I sort of try to apply all these old fashioned film techniques I'd learned as a, as a kid um, and put it into this. And I just, you know, the, to get to the Kingsman at the end of this movie, you know, where it's getting more and more, I think, by the end of the film, we're getting more into the language. I think that people would associate with Kingsman in the last 35, 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, and also in the middle part with Reese, well, with Rasputin. Um, so these, wherever I could put Kingsman stuff in it, I would. But wherever I had to stay true to history and be respectful of the characters, I would as well. So it was a hell of a, there's a lot of stuff we cut out, which was definitely way too Kingsman y. You know, I had three Rasputin scenes, which would have probably given me an NC 17 rating. <laughs> he was bonkers. I, I, he was so entertaining. And you I, saw I love the plain down version. <laughs> That's all I can say. Will we see those scenes someday, do you think? Maybe one day. Maybe. Yeah. Who knows? It's it's also it's not the first prequel that you've tackled. You did you did X Men First Class. How did those experiences compare? And was there anything that you learned from your experience on X Men that you were able to apply here? I think the main thing was it gave me the I thought if I can get away doing the Cuban Missile Crisis with blue people running around, um, I can get away with this. So I think it gave me more much more confidence to take 
what other people would call two, which people are already saying it, some of the complaints at the moment are, you've taken two genres and threw them together. What is this? What is it? I'm like, well, it's a <laughs> Dawn film. I had it on Kickass. So I'm going, what, you're doing R-rated and superhero kids thing? What do you, do? I, you know, I always get this criticism for, you know, trying to be different. Um, but I'll be bored if I wasn't trying to be different. And yeah, First Class definitely gave me the confidence that you can take an historical event and just play around with it a little, but still stick to the historical facts. So just larger picture plan for the Kingsman franchise as of now, what what are you thinking about? Because there was, you know, Kingsman 3, but then there's some setup here. There's also a TV series that was talked about at some point. Where, where do we stand? Where do we stand is, God willing, uh, next year we are concluding the Eggsy Harry relationship before they are great granddad and granddad together. So they're both getting on. Again, that goes off into a very different, you know, we, we're ready to go. So we're hoping to shoot it mid, mid to late summer. Um, if people like this, we'd love to do another one of these, uh, you know, with the four characters at the end. I always get there. I'm trying to remember everyone's name. With Oxford, Polly, Shola, and Aaron's character. I cannot remember. Archie Reed with Archie Reed. Um, those four characters and Stanley Tucci as well and Tom Hollander. Uh, so to see them going on a, on the next decade would be great. If we did a spin-off TV series, yeah, we, we have a whole really fun idea for Statesman. Um, but I think that would be, it was giving me, me confidence. I mean, I thought Loki was brilliantly done. I mean, really mm -hmm. well done. I saw Loki. So I thought, hey, maybe we could do our version of that with Statesman with, you know, with, with all the, with the American characters and that's the TV spinoff. But I don't know, I'm trying to get through this at the moment. So ho hopefully people will watch this and this goes well enough that we do Kingsman 3 and this. And the TV thing, you know, it, it, it has to be good, you know, and that, that, but that's, you know, I'm scared of television because I, it's such a different medium to what I'm used to. Uh, um, but Loki, I was really impressed with Loki when I saw Loki. So I was, I liked it a lot. I love that. Do you watch all the all the Marvel Disney Plus shows? Not all of them I've been filming, but Loki was, we, before we started this, was already out. So I'm behind, should we say. 